Hey everyone, today we'll be learning how to make a realistic wooden floor in Blender. Because we're often found stepping on them, most people overlook the importance of a realistic floor in a render. Having a beautiful, realistic floor in your scene can go a long way to conveying the attitude of the scene, as well as convincing the viewer it is real. We'll be learning a bunch of cool concepts including how to generate bump and specular maps from singular textures all within Blender, how to add scratches and imperfections to surfaces, how to add and animate realistic depth of field, and lots more. Let's dive right in. As per tradition, open up Blender and delete the default cube and all surrounding components. The scene will consist of a ground plane for the floor and some planes for lights. Scale up a flat plane by about 10 times for the wooden floor. Add three more planes and resize them into long, thin, vertical rectangles. Position them how you think they should be to provide varying lighting in your scene. I like to have two in the front where the camera will be facing and one behind the camera for general lighting. Add your camera to the scene, move the viewport to a view you like, and use alt Control 0 to align the camera to the view. Then, tweak its position using the X, Y, and Z transformation tools of your choice. I like to have the camera looking at the floor from a very low angle. This makes sense considering that the floor in this particular scene is the subject of the image. Finally, make sure that the floor takes up the entire camera so the viewer can't see beyond the edge. Today's lighting isn't going to be anything too fancy. Split your screen vertically to get two windows, and switch the view of one to the node editor. We'll be working in here for the majority of the time, so make sure it is comfortably large. Shift right click on all three of the lighting planes and join them into one object. Give them a new material, call it something lighting related. Like lighting. Next, select the diffuse node and hit shift S to change the type. Change it to an emission shader and give it a value of three or four. Now that you have your lighting, fiddle around with your scene so that the lighting planes give a changing characteristic to the lights with lighter spots and darker spots. Change your camera angle too if you feel like it. Okay, now onto the meat and potatoes of the tutorial, texturing the wood. We'll be doing it in two stages, the wood texture and the scratch texture. I have provided links to all the textures used in the description below, but I recommend trying this with your own textures. Create a new texture for the wood floor in the compositor. Select the diffuse node and click Ctrl T if you have the node wrangler add-on. If not, just add a texture coordinate mapping an image texture node and hook them all together from the UV output of the texture coordinate node. Let's generate a UV map for our floor. Select the plane, tab into edit mode and hit U and then click unwrap to unwrap the texture. Tab out of edit mode and let's get back to work on the texture. Next thing you want to do is give the image a texture. Select Open on the Image Texture node and select your wood texture. Using the mapping node, rotate it to your liking. If your computer doesn't have enough processing power for real-time rendering, or you don't like fan noise, you can use the Material View option to preview the material you are working on. Once you have the texture oriented to your liking, we can begin making it realistic. First, add an RGB Curves node to give yourself more fine-grained control over the color of the texture. You can set the mood by altering the more prominent colors. In this case, I want the scene to be a little warmer, so I will turn up the red value of the texture a little bit. Next, add a mix and then a glossy shader to your scene. It will look horrible right now in the real-time render view, but that's okay. We need to tell Blender where to use the glossy texture, or in other words, where to make the wood shiny, and where to use diffuse. Instead of using an external specular map, add an RGB black-white and a color ramp node, hook them together, and plug the color output from the image texture into the input on the RGB black-white node. Plug the output from the color ramp to the factor input on the mix shader, and Control shift click on the color ramp node to plug it into the material output so we can see what it looks like. It's a black and white image. The white is where the material is shiny, and the dark is where the material is non-reflective. To change this, play with the values on the color ramp until you get a configuration that you think will look good and try it out. Hmm, the gloss looks good, but it's a little too bright. Mix the output of your mix shader with the output from the original diffuse node and check the real-time view. There we go, much more subdued and much more realistic. Now that the specular is done, we are going to quickly add bump. To add bump mapping, duplicate the color ramp and plug in the output from the RGB black-white node into it. Connect the output from the color ramp to the height input of a bump mapping node, and turn the strength down to something you find realistic. Plug the output from the bump into the normal inputs on both the glossy and diffuse shaders. Ta-da! You now have some fairly realistic bump mapping. It won't be a displacement map, but it will do in a pinch. Next, we need to add scratches. To do this, we're going to add a scratch texture on top of the wood texture and play with the settings until it's barely visible. Hold on to your hats! 
Add another image mapping texture coordinate node setup to the node map. Plug it into a diffuse shader and add your scratch texture. Now we want to play with the orientation a little bit. Connect the diffuse texture straight into the material output node, go into the material view, and reorient the scratch map to your liking. In my case, I scaled it down so that it matched the size of the wood texture and rotated it a little along the Z axis. Once you're happy with this, go ahead and add an RGB black-white node in between the diffuse and the image texture. If you want more control over the contrast of the texture, you can throw in a color ramp too. Now, mix the output of a transparent shader and the diffuse shader and use the color output on the RGB black-white node as the factor. This will tell the image to be transparent where there are no scratches. Next, add another mix shader and combine the output of the first mix shader with the output from the transparent shader. This will make the scratches fainter. Mix this output with the output from the wood floor texture and admire the results. Good job, you've made a floor. Some depth of field, never heard of anyone. First, add an empty to the scene. Name it depth of field so you know it's a depth of field empty. Move it to where you want the camera to focus. Next, right click on your camera, go to the camera tab in the properties panel, scroll down to depth of field and select your empty as the focus. Play with the radius size under aperture to get a result that looks artful and realistic. If you have filmic blender, select it under color management and increase the strength of the lights to make the scene more visible. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want a tutorial on how to install filmic blender. Once that's done, you're done with the scene. Let it render and come back for the post-process compositing. Welcome back, it's compositing time. Go to the node editor, switch to the image node editor and check use nose and backdrop. Control shift click on the render layers node to get a viewer node. Add a glare node to make the lighting more realistic, but don't overdo it. Use some fog glow and a low threshold to get a blooming result. Next, add an RGB curves node to color grade the image to your liking. Let the color reflect the feel you want to achieve. Finally, let's add some camera effects for photorealism, namely chromatic aberration and film grain. To do this, add a lens distortion node to the map. Set distort to something very small like 0.002 and check off fit and jitter. You can see how some pixels are different colors now, giving the scene a more muted look. We're basically done guys, good job. You've made a realistic floor. If you have any questions or want to suggest a future tutorial, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more tutorials like these and let me know how I can prove in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a nice night.